Hello everyone, my name is Josh Atwell. Really excited to be here at Insight 2016. Do a little V Brown bag. I'm gonna do kind of a Will 101 on why DevOps exists in the world and you know some perspective on DevOps as a framework for managing and, and uh, deploying applications. Uh, I, I, I forego a nice little title slide and go straight to the point. If you look in your environments and you look at uh, IT organizations around the world, you have certain levels of maturity that have happened over time, right? We've, we've moved from having dedicated servers and applications installed directly, and we've moved into virtualization and matured in virtualization. Organizations have adopted new management platforms on top of virtualization or automation. There's been more maturity throughout, and um, they've also started adopting new services like cloud services, whether it be on-premises cloud, your own private cloud, hybrid cloud, public cloud, like the way that we deliver infrastructure and deliver the capabilities to operate and run applications has changed fundamentally. So if you look at this graph, you can identify a place where you probably are in the maturity cycle of your organization and the direction that you are intending on going. And when we look at the focus areas for DevOps, specifically from an infrastructure and operations standpoint, you're very much looking at the, the process of developing software identifying ways to improve the way we plan for the development of the software, how we develop and test the software. We also are very interested in understanding the, the release of the software because it doesn't matter if you commit code and push it, if you can't actually deploy and release it, it's not valuable at all, right? And then monitoring and learning from the environment and from that deploy and that release and seeing how the application is functioning in the environment, how that process went, identifying constraints and challenges, and then um, alleviating those, you know, correcting them, preventing them from happening again. <clears throat> so when we look at DevOps from a, a purpose standpoint, it's really about improving the quality of life for everyone involved with the process of deploying software, right? Being able to continually deliver software at the pace that is important for your organization. Right? Not saying that you have to deploy 100 times a day, but being able to deploy reliably each time it's necessary for you to do a deployment, right? Um, also, from a DevOps perspective, it's very important to you know, look at having more visibility, more understanding of the functional nature of how work flows through your environment and how that the deployment of software and the development of software actually happens, having under, uh, better understanding. Having that visibility and that better understanding means that you're going to have a reduced rate of failures and when you do have a failure, you're able to mitigate that, you know, return to a, a normal state, and you've learned, and therefore you're able to prevent that state from happening again. So it also leads to a lot less rework and unplanned work, because everybody loves spending the weekend waiting for, you know, code to be deployed. From a business standpoint, DevOps is providing organizations an opportunity to be very agile about how they're delivering software and features. Uh, more and more companies, software development is becoming a fundamental component of how they differentiate in their market, maintain market share, improve their customer experience, or grow their customer base. So it's very important for them to not only have a stable operating model in order to deliver these applications and these features and capabilities, but also to ensure that as they have an interest in deploying a new feature, they can do that in a timely manner. Um, a recent example of this is if you look at Yelp, uh, everybody's very familiar with Yelp. It, you know, it's right there on iOS device on Android. It allows you an opportunity to find a restaurant, you know, see ratings and reviews uh, that other people have had for that restaurant. With the growth of popularity of Pokemon Go, Yelp saw an opportunity to tie in data around Pokemon Go to say, this restaurant is near a Poke Gym or a Poke Stop, or we think there's Pokemon in, near this location. So when you're doing your search for uh, where you're going to have dinner or uh, a place that you're going to, to visit or you know, provide patronage for, you know, for that business, you could actually filter and look for ones that have Pokemon-related activities nearby. So it affects your purchasing decision. When we look at the data that's being presented uh, through reports of the, of the market, you know, one of the things that's really interesting to note is that for the most part, people who are implementing DevOps aren't necessarily looking for revenue growth or looking for increased customer satisfaction as a result of that. What it really is, is a side effect. Like the fact that they are focused on improving the delivery mechanism of code, you know, all the way from development to deployment and back again. They're, by focusing on that, the net result is improved revenue and improved customer satisfaction. So not going in with the expectation of doing that, but having that as a positive side effect. 
One of the things that's really interesting when hearing people's DevOps stories is everybody likes to talk about the frequency at which they deploy. But the data is showing that you know, while that frequency is certainly going up, you know, we've got 71% of the of organizations that reported in that said they were doing DevOps uh, are deploying more frequently than once a quarter. Right? And that's, that's actually pretty impressive. Right? So 32% are per, you know, deploying code once per quarter, but we actually have 39% who are actually deploying um, more frequently than that, like once, once a month. Interestingly enough, only 5% that have been reporting in, into these reports are saying that they are doing multiple deploys each day. Now those numbers can vary, but I think some of the reasoning around that is very interesting. Another important thing to note is that about 80% of the companies that reported in said that their DevOps initiative is focused on a net new application. You know, when you look at DevOps and you look at the applications that are being built in this framework, at least for the, in, this, in the beginning, it is a net new application. This is not a zero sum game, but there are things that organizations can do in order to kind of um, move their uh, previous applications or their legacy applications to that DevOps framework. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. When we talk about understanding like the purpose of a daily release cycle, one thing that's important to know that it's very easy to talk about Google having daily release cycles because they are actually needing to be respondent to the things that are happening in our daily lives. They are an extension of what happens in our daily lives. Uh, a few weeks back, uh, I went to Google and I searched metal counts. Now, any other time of year, that may actually return results around things on the periodic table. Who knows? Right? But because the Olympics were going on, someone had actually developed code into the Google platform that knew that when I said medal counts, what I actually wanted to see was how many gold medals did the US won compared to China, compared to Great Britain, to, compared to the rest of the world. Right? They, someone had to actually code and release that. Okay? And so they need to be responding to the changes in day-to-day -day environment. Okay? So if you go out today and you search for something about the presidential election, you will see information being presented specifically because somebody coded that. Most organizations do not have this criteria. Um, what, I've, what I tend to find is that there, there may be organizations that are committing code frequently as much as every day, but that, that is not happening in deployment every single time. Now, when you look at achieving DevOps success, it's really about integrating your IT operations people with your developers. because. Having communication and collaboration and using common tool sets and integrating the work that you're doing with one another you know, is absolutely critical. What we found is that this is kind of meh at best, right? People, the people have you know, lost the, the, the will, not the will, but the motivation to communicate. And we've gotten into this point with virtualization that we just throw everything at it and let it go. And cloud has fundamentally changed what we expect from our infrastructure and from our IT from a services standpoint. If you've been in IT for a while, you'll probably be familiar with the fact that beginning in IT, when you're installing applications directly on bare metal, it was all about simply being available and reliable. Well, that's no longer good enough, right? The virtualization age taught us that we also needed to be able to consolidate and do more with less. But at the same time, we couldn't you know, eliminate that requirement to be available and reliable. With the growth of Amazon and cloud services, we've, the on-demand nature has now forced us into also expecting things faster. Time to value is critically important. It's one of the leading uh, drivers for shadow IT or for going out to uh, platforms like Amazon in order to develop your applications and deploy them. We're now going into a place where I, I call it the application evolution. And in this space, we're looking for delivering everything as a service. What we're wanting is an or, from an organization standpoint to say, I need this capability, I need it the, configured this way, and I need to bring in this service and this other feature from replication or snapshotting, um, you know, or being able to manipulate the configuration from a security standpoint to bring in certain requirements. But I want to be able to do that ad hoc. I want to be able to do that through configuration, and I want to be able to do that as a service. I no longer want to have a handoff and actually communicate with somebody directly in order to get that. Now, if you've been in IT operations, you're probably very familiar with the Great Wall of Deployment. The Great Wall of Deployment is where the developers develop the code, they commit it, and then they throw it over the wall for operations to take over and spend their weekend getting that code deployed. Well, nobody likes that. And part of the problem that we've had is that the infrastructure that we've supported has been mostly difficult to manage from a standpoint of scale and being able to handle multiple deploys, right? The CLI based expect scripts, having very little agility and being very dependent on what the organization that you bought 
the infrastructure from has delivered to you, right? And having limited accessibility. We haven't provided the access to that uh, features and those capabilities to the developers or to people who are actually consuming it. Now that infrastructure has become more extensible, we are enabling new capabilities to provide uh, options for organizations who are trying to streamline their development and deployment process. And they're being able to do that because the infrastructure now provides APIs and SDKs. Um, REST has become very pervasive and can be leveraged um, through numerous tools and uh, numerous uh, integrations. And this is providing tools that both the developers and the operations folks can leverage together. For instance, you can have Puppet managing the solid fire system, right? The, the storage team can manage certain configurations on the storage system, and then the developers could have access to, as they deploy their application and set that configuration, to also include configurations for the storage system itself. Think snapshots or replication or changing the QoS settings. Now, there is this school of thought that developers don't even want operations. And well, that makes total sense. They simply want to be able to develop their applications, get it deployed, and move forward. Right? And what they're really looking for, though, is integration directly through APIs and the tool sets that they already use. They do not want to go to your you know, graphical user interface. They do not want to go to your tool set. They're wanting to use the tool sets that are working for them that they're already leveraging. Right? And one of the things that's a truism is that they're trying to solve things that are irrespective to the infrastructure. They're trying to solve specific challenges around the code. What we're also finding is that operations people are now also very keen into managing in this, in this same way. Leveraging integrations, being less likely to go directly to a user interface, and wanting to use similar tool sets for managing the infrastructure as the developers are using for managing their applications and their configurations. And the key takeaway is that no matter what's going on in the, in, in the environment, how you're developing and preparing to deploy code, the focus and onus should always be on being able to deploy the code when you're ready, when it's important, like when, when you're ready to commit it and doing it successfully each and every time without having to take a lot of headache and a lot of effort um, and identifying problems and, and dealing with those. Incremental improvements over time in order to be able to deliver software and deploy it at, at, at will, not at the pace of you know, limitations in your infrastructure. And with that, I'm gonna say thank you and uh, I'll end the talk there. If you'd like to reach out to me, you can find me at Josh underscore Atwell on Twitter. Always happy to talk about DevOps, bourbon, and just general shenanigans. So thank you again.